come all this way, and now I'm going to take it all! <laughs> when a game goes through an on-again, off-again development cycle, that's usually a bad thing. I mean, delays are one thing, but cancellations almost never bode well for the game being shelved. Frankly, they're usually canceled for a reason. And this is one of those games, originally planned as an Xbox release, it was cancelled in 2003 before being picked up by a third publisher in 2006, and then a fourth publisher in 2010. Ultimately, the game would be finished by Snapdragon Games for the Nintendo Wii, and brought to the States by Atari earlier this month in this form. A form that clearly wears the burdens of its past. It would feel wrong to call this a bad game, and maybe even incorrect. If nothing else, there are some interesting ideas at work in the core game. It has a great art style, an occasionally brilliant one in fact, and a fun sense of humor. But unfortunately, this is a game that stumbles over its own two feet, weighed down by the apparent scars of a troubled development cycle that spanned nearly a decade in two consoles. You play the game as Pixie, a girl who climbs buildings and is evidently impervious to the effects of gravity and physics. She finds herself in the center of the Earth, where an evil group of creatures is planning to conquer the surface. Obviously, it's up to Pixie to stop them, and I say obviously because the game feels this is obvious enough to warrant no explanation. This place looks like some sort of lab. A long story short, Pixie finds a big daddy suit and jumps in it. She finds friends to join her, none of them ask questions, and they embark on a journey to stop the inner Earth dwellers. What all this means for you is an action platform game that sometimes flirts with being interesting, but never really seals the deal. The Core Gang is a 3D game, but only in a technical sense. It's actually very linear, almost 2D in its feel, because you're essentially just going from point A to point B. The cool worlds the game often creates go largely unappreciated, since you never get to explore them as fully as you might like. Of course, being linear isn't necessarily a problem, except for when it is. The game provides a track to follow, and it might even be an interesting track if you could see what you were doing. 3D games like this have largely solved the problems that were inherent to them during the Nintendo 64 period, but the core gang seems to have missed that memo. Its camera is so bad, it actually inhibits your enjoyment of the things the game does right, specifically some of the platforming and environments. Being inside a monster's stomach is really cool. Falling to the bottom of it because you can't see what you're doing is not. But speaking of that stomach, this is, and again, on occasion, a good-looking Wii game. The art is probably the highlight of the core gang, and it's realized through some very nice graphics techniques. The textures are fantastic for a Wii game, and some of the effects are impressive too. Now, the low point of the game's aesthetics is its character design, but otherwise, it's a very cool-looking game. It's just too bad it doesn't play quite as cool. It feels clunky, and the weight of the suit you're moving in can make the platforming especially difficult at times. But I think perhaps the most difficult thing is seeing potential go unfulfilled. The core gang is an idea that lots of people have been confident about, but after all these years, the game just isn't as good as the idea. Anyone with this hat on, you can be certain to trust that they are one of us. Cause they are one of us.